with me too with professions is, I mean, I don't work in that field, but I, I do work in a professional environment. And um, you always have people approach you who say, who want to go a job with your company. And I think as professionals, we have to think a lot about our reputation when we recommend people. Because um, you, there's always that little limit of, or that risk there that that person won't be successful or they will do something that will embarrass you. Um, so I think that it's probably universal for people to be uh, cautious and to really put a lot of thought behind people that they recommend in any field, in any position. So if you establish that relationship with someone um, through mentoring, through networking, um, and you prove to that person that you do a really good job, um, then you have a better chance of them wanting to recommend you. Um, and I think a lot of times I've, I've asked to, I have friends who ask me to give recommendations or write letters or, or those types of things. Um, and if I really don't know you personally or haven't spent time with you or have had you know, some type of really good reason to recommend you, I'm not willing to put a career that I've worked for 15 years to do out there um, or my reputation or those types of things uh, out for people that I just don't know. So I think um, to their point, really taking the time to find someone in the field um, that you get along with, that you can network with, that you have a good uh, relationship with, maybe that you share a similar background or they see something in you that, uh, that maybe they remember when they were in your shoes. Uh, and then you, you know, you, you build that relationship through them and that's how you get a successful recommendation. Yeah, a, um, a few PAs have asked me um, if I want to shadow them, um, bring my uh, transcript and bring all the courses that I've taken in college. They want to see where, what classes I have taken and what GPA I am having so that they can, you know, they can say, hey, this person is a 3.8 GPA and all these signs and you know, courses, awesome, go for it, mm -hmm. come see me. And then other time, other students I know are like 2.8, 3.0, you know, oh, well, sure, kind of. So well, that's what they do to you when they don't know you. They want to see your academic sure. records. Well, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I think it's probably not just this. I was an academic advisor in the classics department for 12 years. And even with us, whenever there's recommendations for scholarships or anything like that, you would think this professor that you'd have for maybe two or three classes, you know, hey, yeah, I'll write a recommendation letter for you. And then they'd come to me like, okay, I think I had them like for this class and this class, what was their grade, you know? So even then, with all these students, it's really hard for them to remember, but maybe if you, you know, tell them what grade they made with you, they're like, oh yeah, that was a good student, I remember now, and then they'll write the recommendation. So it's even in the academic field. We do have to be careful. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a really good but, but if, yeah. you know, if you've been stellar and responsible, and um, I'm not likely to, to give a recommendation to someone that's only taken one course with me, but if they've had both the anatomy and the physiology with me, and I've known them for what, nine months, um, yeah, they've been stellar. It's not hard to offer help. I mean, that's, to me, that's what at least I'm here for. You have a question here? Yeah, so um, would you recommend like, doing certification programs? after I graduate to kind of be able to get into a field in the medical if you know if you know the job opportunities for me came up as I was doing my second year of PA school as I'm doing my clinical rotations you start working in clinics and meeting physicians that's actually how I got my job so I didn't feel the need to because I got right into where I wanted to go but if you have something that you love and you want to be really competitive if it's orthopedics and you just love orthopedics and you want to be an ortho PA, then, then, then I would, you know, that would put you up, you know, a step ahead of other people in, in that field. But it's not always necessary. Sometimes you can get into your field. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, um, I guess, okay, because, for example, my degree is biology and, um, like, when I graduate, I don't know, I don't necessarily know a job that I could get into right away. Like, usually you need like a certification to be like a clinical assistant or Oh, you mean that? that I, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. I went back and I was a, got a nursing assistant yeah. certificate so that I could work in the ER. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I thought that was 
probably like the best way to go. Yeah, that's Second what I did. There are some entry level jobs where you don't have to have that. Like I was a phlebotomist, which basically meant I ran around to the different floors and drew blood from patients, and I did not need any certification for that. So there can be entry level, but it's hard. And sometimes you do need, and it's usually a quick little program to get something like that. Can you get a job like that, like over this, like you might be like, uh, you said you're a phlebotomist, like could you do that over the summer? Yeah, I did. Like, can you? like not being graduated from university? Mm -hmm. I, when I was uh, getting my biology degree for a summer, I did phlebotomy, yeah. Yeah, to expand on those, you can do an ENT certification within three months, so that would be like the summer. And you can also do an entry-level patient care technician job without yep. being certified. Yep. Yeah, and those um, are great, that's a great background. Yeah, I know a lot of people who just like walk into and ask, like, you have to patient care tech and entry-level jobs available.
mine was so many years ago, I don't remember taking my GRE. How long did my junior and senior year? Yeah. Um, usually the junior year, because I mean, you're allowed to take it a couple of times. Um, and you don't want to take it too late that when you're applying, you miss a deadline because you don't like your GRE score. And especially if you're trying to be competitive, and a lot of schools are, you know, like what Terry said, they're, they're look at the holistic approach, you know, the whole person, so not just your GPA, but your GRE and your experience. So you want to get all the pieces of the pie, like, as high as possible, you know, the best GRE score, the best, you know, GPA. So I would take it with enough time that if you don't like it, you can take it again. You mentioned um, GRE or MCAT. Which one would you um, 